Minister Deval. And thank you, Madam Speaker. And I rise once again to share with the House an important issue affecting Australia today: domestic violence. Latest statistics have shown that by 6:30 a.m. throughout Australia, police have attended the scenes of 195 incidents of domestic violence. By 10:30 a.m., that number is 315. By 5:30 p.m., the number has grown to 525. Each day sees police across Australia attend 657 cases of domestic violence. This is an average of one incident every two minutes. And tragically, as of September this year, 63 women had lost their lives as a result of domestic violence. Well, there has been much media focus in the past um, couple of months regarding the devastating effect of domestic violence and family violence that it has on our society. It's my responsibility to focus on what action can be implemented in my electorate of Dobell. The issue of domestic and family violence was once again highlighted recently when I hosted a breakfast to provide support for the Central Coast Women's Health Centre. And domestic violence programs. And it was a pleasure to welcome Senator the Honourable Michaelia Cash, Minister for Employment and Minister for Women, to Dobell to address the attendees about domestic and family violence. And Senator Cash spoke of the Second Action Plan 2013-16, the second of four stages of the National Plan to reduce violence against women and their children. The Second Action Plan 2013 to 2016 promotes tangible and concrete actions that will be implemented at a local and national level to address the horrendous acts of violence um, in the home and um, particularly domestic violence. Senator Cash spoke of simple measures which were welcomed by the audience who understand the implementation of these actions will bring about a profound difference to the lives of women and men suffering from domestic violence. And perhaps one of the simplest measures to be implemented will be the recognition of apprehended violence orders across state and territory borders. And while currently an AVO is only recognised in the state of territory in which it's granted, the new legislation will mean the AVO is applicable across Australia as a whole. And this is particularly pertinent for those who are fleeing across jurisdictions due to domestic violence. And I know this particular aspect of the Second Action Plan of 2013-16 will make a noticeable difference. And this was reinforced recently during my visit to Coast Shelter. Now, Coast Shelter is an outstanding organisation which encompasses the New South Wales Central Coast and is responsible for a myriad of service making life-changing differences to the community. And I was humbled to visit a domestic violence facility managed by Coast Shelter where I spoke with women who uh, welcomed the proposed uh, changes regarding national AVO coverage. The electorate of Dobell, uh, possessing one of the highest rates of domestic and family violence in New South Wales, is not a statistic I'm proud of, but uh, one that must be acknowledged in order to move forward and ensure that programs to help and make positive changes are identified and implemented in the region. And what I am proud of is the work undertaken by those in the community, police, ambulance and court services who deal with the issue of domestic and family violence daily. Their passion and dedication rivals no other. Their commitment to what they do and the changes they make in the lives of those who turn to them for help are insurmountable. And I'm proud to know these people and of the work they do to make the electorate of Dobell and the Central Coast a better place to live. Now, addressing the issue of domestic and family violence is not an easy one, and there is no simple fix and no one-size-fits-all solution. However, there are things that can be done now which make a difference. The support raised at the domestic violence breakfast will go towards the provision of creche services at the Central Coast Women's Health Centre for at least a year. And this means that children will have a safe environment to be in while their mother receives counselling, support and advice regarding their domestic violence situation. Now, I've also been speaking with local service providers regarding the issue of financial abuse. Now, financial abuse does not receive a large amount of visibility. However, it is severely affecting a large number of people in my electorate. 
Um, put simply, Madam Speaker, financial abuse involves the debts and bills of a family household being put in the name of the victim and the mortgage and assets in the name of the perpetrator. So financial abuse usually means the family income is controlled by the perpetrator who does not pay the debts in the name of the victim, which affects the victim's credit rating in the future. And this is something I'll be working in the near future with agencies Members, and the government to raise awareness. Thank the member for